Dion going into the rest of the talk, I don't know if I, I, I felt inclined to say to Oa. Are we know, trying to get into politics now, man? If we want to, I felt inclined just to acknowledge that uh, Margaret Thatcher's passing. Man, you, you've got three fucking pages on politics. <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to. The, 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 the text section goes half of the first page. No, half of the first page. I, 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 is all politics. I, actually, this was far shorter until I found the what the fuck retard in comments on YouTube. <laughs> I, it just, I, I... Hey, all I can say is we had 14 people stabbed here in Texas in a, in a college, so now what I want to do is I want to ban all not, all assault knives. That's what I want to do. I want to ban them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what are you saying? Do we, 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 we get into that debate? Me? I want, I want yeah. to get to that debate. Dude. Go, the, go for it. I know I, I know about 50 people who have pledged to never set foot in Colorado again. I want to hey, I want to make blades two millimeters, uh, you know, two millimeters um, in length. Dude, and, uh, walk that are you know, it's not like negative for that, though, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, man, because they're assault weapons, don't you know? Well, okay, Ben, as someone from you the... like Biden, then just, just use a letter opener. They're much more effective. <laughs> No, 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 no. We can't allow letter openers because those have the ability to be cut. No, 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 no. Bit, bit. We have letter openers that look menacing. We cannot allow menacing looking letter openers. It's bad. We should ban corkscrews. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, man. What's it you want? Go ahead, Bob. As someone who was in the military, what do you think of when you hear assault weapon? I laugh. <laughs> because if you called your rifle or long gun a weapon, you would be hit with it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my rifle. This is my gun. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, and you know, damn Joe well, Biden like, contradicted himself. He was, he's, there's YouTube videos, literally, where he's like, he's an idiot. He, yeah, dude, he's saying, well, you can't really aim the AR-15 that well. It doesn't do that well. Shotgun's much better. I said, so I'm, like, scratching my hands, like, do you know you just destroyed your argument for like, banning the AR-15? It's like, the shotguns. we should ban shotguns. Actually, Colorado tried to do that. Oh, oh and I love Piers Morgan. The power of the R-15. I was like, dude, let me give you a fucking 12 gauge and let's talk about power. The reason why women like AR-15s is because they lack the amount of power to recoil. Okay, I was going to say, oh. hey, 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 Piers, let me give you a you know three and a half inch seven slug from a pump and see how well you like it. Dude, I mean, is he fucking crazy? It's like the power. What are you talking about? Power? What power? What? Jesus Christ. I, I, as a you know. I'm a gun guy, so when I hear the power of a 223, I'm like, it's an overglorified 22. That is not the <laughs> hypersonic. That, that's all I think of any time. It's 3,000 feet. Yeah. That, oh, I wish I, I wish I had them in front of me, but there's all these damn statistics that, it, it, especially at close range, and all the scenarios that people are outraged about. You know it. Caliber. So there's a whole mess of things that people just think make all the fucking difference in the world, and they're statistically proven to be jack shit. No, uh, it's just ah. Uh. You know, let me say something to solve. Like for me, the stabbings that happen at this school. You know, I think there should be more types of security. Now the thing of it is that gets expensive. So how do I answer that? I see, I'll tell you a law I disagree with. Texas is about is about ready to vote on a law to, to shorten the, the CHL classes from 10 hours to six hours. I don't agree with that. I actually think, I actually don't, now I will say majority of the people that get CHLs are pretty much gun people, so they go and practice. What about CHL? Say, uh, huh? Concealed carry. Yeah. Oh. Concealed carry. But the same thing say, with anybody who gets their honor safety. They get a CHL, they get a CHL, and all you have to do is renew it for five years. And so in five, I guarantee that per, there are a lot of people, I'm sure out there, they get the CHL, and they never shoot it, you know, they just shoot it that one day to qualify, never, you never really shoot it again. 
and then five years comes by to renew it, they'll shoot it again. And that's not fucking right. You need, I, 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 think, I think that there should be uh, proficiency. You know, it, We need to have proficiency. Now, as far as the basic CHL, that's fine. But see, I don't agree in gun-free zones. And the way to get around it, I think, that we sh what we should do is enable. Let's create higher tier uh, classifications for people to get licenses that can carry on school campuses, or even licenses that means you can carry everywhere. And what that means is that you have to have more training. You've taken and competency, and safe, tests competency safe fire, so on and so forth. Right. In other words, so you have to have a proficiency test to maintain this status, and I have no problem with that. So, you know, you practice, you, you, because you should be practicing, you, know, you should be practicing uh, with the firearms. So these new licenses would, in other words, you'd be just as qualified as a police officer in terms of rounds down range, but but you voluntarily take on the responsibility so that if you're at a, you know, if you're in a school, you can legally carry in the apartment arsenal that doesn't cost the school anyway, or any, any money in terms of hiring you as security, you know, if you happen to be there, or if it's a teacher that gets licensed or whatever. And now if they want to, I'm sure you could probably be hired. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't, you know, make money from doing, getting higher level certifications. Well, but that would but be decided I'm by school, school a by district, by training. facility. Huh? That would be decided by school, by district, by facility, by whatever, rather well, than one. As far as the state of not. Texas, right? Yeah, they could decide to pay you or not. But the state of Texas, like, I would like to see higher ranking forms of licenses, like we do with cars, right? A, a class C, you can drive an automobile. To drive a motorcycle, you need a class M. To drive, uh, forget how many axles, you need a class B. And then to drive even more axles, you need a class A. Why not do that with uh, licensing of uh, firearms? So they the you, CDL. Yeah, you, you. In other words, in other words, because I disagree with gun-free zones, and if the concern is that we need more proficient people, then enable that proficiency so that, because I guarantee there will be people that are volunteering for I can carry anywhere, and you know they'll take their proficiency tests I don't know x amount of times a year, and you know they can be maybe you can use this as you know businesses could use this as incentive pay, you know hey. If you know you're a teacher or something like that, or the districts or whatever, instead of having to pay, uh, you know, this much in security, it's a, this little much more in salary. Uh, you know, if you are licensed this way, you know, kind of like the military does things like, oh, if you hazard pay and all sorts of shit. I know oil companies do this shit too. You know, if you do this, you get a little bit more salary and X, Y, and Z. So you know that could be done that way. But but a person should just be able to go and get a higher level license. You know they pay. You know they pay whatever it is, and then they have to take the proficiency test throughout the year, and they maintain this, and and they and you know what even uh, I'll probably allow them to carry higher caliber weapons, you know or, or something like that. In the in the instance maybe if they are uh, wanting to be a school wants to hire them, let's say, uh, or an increase in pay that they can use higher caliber weapons. Uh, and have permission, you know, for concealed and storage and stuff like that, whatever. But instead of taking shit away, let's enable people smartly. You know, because I don't want every fucking but jackass. That, but that's not the mentality of America right now. If one person can't do it, we have to take it away from everybody. Well, see, it's just to me, it doesn't make you, auto banning doesn't, it's like in Britain that Piers Morgan likes to say, we only have 33 gun crimes. That's not the point, Pierce. When you took guns away, your murder rate went up. In other words, they found they found some other gosh damn thing to kill fucking people with, and they're doing more of it. And it's usually a billy club. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? I just read articles recently that said in the recent months now, which is a good thing, uh, England is, is, is dropping their crime rate. You know how they did it? More security, more cops. Gee, that's a novel idea. Why can't why, why can't that same logic then say the way we fight crime is with more security? Well, but in England, more cops isn't necessarily more guns because they have armed officers and not armed well, officers. Well, however, they're fucking killing people over there. Their murder rates went up, you know. And, and I, I've got plenty of articles to back up my sources too on this. And I was reading, you know, like I said in recent articles, that England's all happy that they're finally getting lower crime rates and you know, six or seven years. Now they banned their weapon, their gun ban went in effect, I believe in 1997, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, their murder rates went up and were, were hot. Um, and finally, uh, and it doesn't matter how their murder rate compares to the United States. 
Because if the, if the logic is that I ban guns, murder rates go up, that's all we need. You know? Well, I, you know what? If you want to go by that logic, I'm just going to go by, let's see, uh, there's this little statistic going around about Chicago. Strictest gun control in the fucking country, murder capital of the fucking country. So let's compare. Really? Yeah, let, let, yeah, let's compare apples to apples, United States City to United States City. So the well, Pierce Morgan would say, well, why not, why not in New York, and blah blah blah, blah and all this other stuff. Actually, New York, there's a lot of there's a lot of bureaucracy in there involved with getting a gun. In New okay. York, I don't know what the New York laws are, but I know people that have AR-15s in New York, though. Are they legal? Yeah. Hmm. We bought them, you know, before, I don't know, New York, I know, just made some other things. Now, the New York AR-15s, I think, can have a muzzle suppressor, or a flash yeah, suppressor. Yeah, the flash suppressor. They have the serial numbers. And I know, I don't know if there's... Every gun has to have serial numbers, call me. I know, oh. they have to, but not all of them do. Yeah, no, they do. No, federally speaking, any gun owner with a gun that doesn't have serial numbers can get some serious shit. They can go directly to jail. <laughs> I know, but do not pass go, do not pass a clutch for dollars. There are people that do that. And there are people, hence, all the bad guys are going to still have guns. Because they're still going to break the law, even if the laws are in there to, for the sake of the children. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I do have a question on that. How many people, how many murderers obey the law? None. I, I'm None just, because they just fucking broke the law by murdering. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> okay, well, no, okay. Uh, I've, I've watched a few of Pierce Morgan's interviews with his uh, global gun toting, gun ban crap that he does. Mm -hmm. um, he's the bad. He's debated Marines, he's debated, uh, you know, he's, he's been in school on just about everything. Um, mm -hmm. he, he wants in the murder rate for everything. He doesn't look at just gun murders. Like, so, wow. like, well, no, it's like 12,000 that he claims that were murdered, what was it, last year? Oh, yeah, I heard that, like... 8,000 8, of that was actually gun violence. Yeah, so 40, you can subtract 40, and then half of the 8,000 by murders, uh, what was it? 52% was suicide related or something? Yeah, uh, basically... Or 56% well, something like that? Yeah, then you take out like another 700 or something out of those murders because they were either the, the violent crime, the criminal was killed by a cop or a uh, civilian. Because mm -hmm. so God knows we can't lot. have officers taking out somebody who means to harm someone else. That can't be allowed at all, you know. <laughs> I know he's obsessed with this many rounds down range. Well, uh, rounds down range don't mean shit unless the guy is worth it, worth you know worth worth his weight in gold and, and accuracy. Uh, I was gonna say one. Well, okay, if you have a tri tri burst, it's three to the uh, two to the chest, one to the head. If you want by the <laughs> oh, Jesus, this guy's crazy. And I, I, you know, he'd look at me and, and say, "Could you fire another gun?" I'd say, "Yes, all my handguns I can fire as fast as I do the AR-15." I, you know, I'll, I, if you want me to, I can conceal the magazines a hell of a lot better. I can get freaking thirty round mag. Well, not thirty rounds. I know they they the Glock. Glock, some of the Glocks are making 30 round magazines they extend out, but you can conceal them, they're skinnier, uh, you can put them, you can put more of them. Shit, you can probably go, I know my, my uh, pistols are, I have uh, two 15 rounders, and shoot, I can bring, I don't know, five clips. I, I, was I can unload all that shit very quickly. I was going <laughs> to say, Pierce Morgan is an idiot anyway. Yeah. He's, uh, he, he shows his lack of knowledge when it comes to firearms and just wanting to learn about that. You know, I have no problem with people having a point of view after they indulge in a topic. You know, I'm just glad that you know, I didn't use a shotgun. The Sandy Hook guy didn't use a shotgun. I, that would have been, I think, really... Well, it's like, you know, he talked, he, like you said, ben, you know, he talks about anything more than was the 10 rounds or whatever. And yeah. a, an assault style or military style weapon. Um, that's a crock of shit. Oh, hey, look, I can go buy, buy two fully automatic Glock 17s with 32 rounds, you know, free mags, and, oh, hey, look, it's full auto. <laughs> but it's, little bit, 
it's like little does he realize in order to get that stuff, oh, hey, look, I have to go to a class three FFL dealer. Mm -hmm. Then I have to pay the tax. Oh, hey, look, all those numbers are registered with the government. Oh, hey, look, it, and you already have the registration. Weapon. National Farms Act weapons. And there are a lot of automatic weapons out there. A lot of people don't realize that there's a shit over machine guns out there. Now, they haven't been made for civilian use since 1986. And the only thing, and automatic weapons really only have that $200 tax. But I think the IRS, didn't the IRS stop collecting the tax or something? That's why you just went through different registration or so, something happened. I can't remember. But with the bill of 1986, they don't make them new, but there's a lot of automatic weapons out there. And well, and cons cons constitutionally well, speaking, you can't showing. take the current supply and circulation right. out. Right. But what I'm trying to say is that the, the he because he came to Houston, I know the exact range he went to off the of, of, of I-10. And um, the guy, he was trying to fire a machine gun, and he was right. Uh, the guy was like, you see, you didn't even hit the fucking target. And Pierce Moore was like, yeah, but in a classroom? Uh, probably not, Pierce. I mean... With something that spreads out that's meant for arcing, like uh, buckshot or birdshot, you know, even birdshot at close range with kids, devastating. Um, you could, clearly the guy fired well over 150 rounds, uh, and I'm just saying for, for hit ratio was not terribly accurate at all. It was like 20%. <laughs> if that. Uh, so, I, I would fear the type of ammunition you'd go in with a, with a shotgun, maybe with, with uh, with uh, 10 slugs or whatever. I mean, shit, it could have, just one class, and I don't know how many kids, it would have just, it, would have been, it, wouldn't, have, it wouldn't have been good at all. I mean, it would, what happened, it's atrocious, but I'm just saying that this kid, while he planned it, because the preliminary report came out, um, he didn't seem to be as proficient. And uh, thank God he wasn't. I'm just, I think there would have been much more bloodshed than, than need be. And I think had he chosen a different weapon than the AR-15, it probably would have been worse, too. Well, then they'd be trying to ban that weapon. You know, it's... it's yeah, yeah. He would have caused much more bloodshed if he had, like, two pistols instead of the AR-15. Well, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? People, you know, they ban certain particular weapons. Uh, California, it's illegal to have a 50 caliber weapon. But like a you know Barrett 50 or whatever, and an M M82 or whatever you want to call it, and you're not legally allowed, obligated, yeah, allowed to have those mm -hmm. as a civilian. Mm -hmm. Problem is, California and LA's police departments use the Barrett 50. Hmm. Well, that Bar uh, <laughs> California and LA sent their guns to Barrett to be serviced. Oh, hey, look, you don't allow the 50 caliber round. Oh, guess what? Right. We're not going to service those. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, you know what they did to get around that? Well, there were rounds, too, man. Those freaking 50 caliber rounds, man. Well, you know what Barrett did to get around that? They made it not got caliber. Huh. They made it, for, what was that? I think it's a 4115 or 4119 or something. And it's it, it's kind of like the 338 Lapua Magnum. It's oh. it's basically a 50 front, uh, it's a 50 shell clipped onto like a 41 caliber bullet. So basically, the arms manufacturer is like, "Fuck you! You made these legal. We'll get a different caliber." Yeah, uh, and, and that's the thing. Where you there's a will, a there's a way. <laughs> well, so they have different caliber weapons. Get 51 calibers. Well, no, that, that's the point. My point. You ban a particular weapon, another one will be made that is similar, but it is different enough so it's not on your list. Mm -hmm. People, you know, the thing, the thing with the AR-15 on why it became popular, even because let me tell you, a lot of the Texans hunt with AR-15s, especially hogs with them. And it's Probably. liked because it's, it's yeah, it's, it's liked because you, you, don't, you don't have a fixed stock. You can collapse it and make it for your arm length, especially women. You know, uh, that's why there's a shitload of pink AR-15s out there. And women like, like them. You mean it's light. not? A and, a lot, and an inexperienced person, an inexperienced person is going to probably prefer it because it is lighter. Uh, you know, they can fit to their arm length, and if they're not really used to firing a weapon, it makes it easier to, to fire that weapon than it, than it probably would with a, with a shotgun if you're not used to, to you know, the, uh, the um, blowback from it. And, and I think that's why they, you know, they, they, some people end up using it. Although, like Virginia Tech and most gun crimes in the United States 
Uh, and I think mass, mass shootings as a whole have been done with, with handguns. Um, but mass? No, ma ma mass murders, mass shootings, or oh. local. Um, well, now, I, 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 I don't know, I don't have the statistics on mass shootings. I do know <laughs> the preferred weapon <laughs> is for its practicality is any kind of Glock action pistol. Um, just to, uh, especially um, a, an auto fire one. Now, now, granted, you know, you're just as crazy as I'd rather, I'm more afraid of somebody who has precision and proficiency in a firearm who can get off two shots than I am some kid who goes <laughs> just because. Okay. Yeah. All I can say is you, you want to look at what happens in gun-free zone, okay? You know, look at Chicago, murder a day. I mean, hell, Houston wasn't that you get off all that long ago either because there was about a murder day a while back there too. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, what was that little um, pass out where they were building the Bellway, uh, Beltway 8 where it's just like, it was, hey, look, we can dump, dump a shit here. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, and that's when I, that's when I visited Texas back in like 2006. So it's probably changed since then, I don't know. Oh, well, the area's but, got built out now, so I don't think the Beltway uh, 8 is where you dump bodies now. No, but no, I, no. <laughs> But, uh, you know, Chicago's, you know, what was it, 500 murders or something since all their gun laws. D.C. completely got a hands, uh, uh, handgun free. You know, it's a handgun free zone, supposedly, if you're a civilian. Supposedly. Oh, hey, oh, no, oh, hey, look, guess what? They have the second highest murder rate in the country. Due to handguns, no less. All right, let's look it up. Murder rates. <coughs> what, by state? Yeah, DC will be its own, well, kind of state, I guess. It's a territory, right? FBI unifying, is it, is it the FBI? So you, yeah, it would be, the, it'd be either bad path or uh, FBI. Yeah. Murder is. Is, is, it, is it sort of one? Probably been made less sortable as of late. <laughs> we don't want people looking up actual facts that get in the way in the political in the way of political rhetoric. In, in two thousand, uh, I, I take this as with a grain of salt because I'm not sure where the uh, politi uh, politics three sixty five so takes with a grain of salt. I've recorded eighty eight murders for two thousand and twelve in Washington D.C. alone. That's a city. Hey, Pierce, guess what? Your gun-free zone has more murders than your entire country, supposedly, according to you. Hmm. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, DC is a ghetto. <laughs> well, you know, the real problem here is, and this goes to what Bit was saying, the higher levels of proficiency, the average person is incredibly ignorant about a firearm. It's like they, they don't they don't even know how to judge whether it's dangerous. Or Guns not. don't kill people. People kill people. Well, Bob, you live in the most peaceful state. Yeah, and it also has the most goddamn guns. <laughs> oh, I wonder how that works. <laughs> because hunting is a way to life up here. I mean, hell. Then in you... Vermont, New Hampshire, okay. Let's see, least peaceful, peaceful states, Louisiana. That has Louisiana. other things related to it. Nevada. This goes from NBCNews.com. When was this dated, though? Uh, oh, this is 2010. What is the statistics from? I don't know. I saw it in 2010. Let's see. Um, oh. Gun crime rate, 2000. Oh, no, but that's not gun crime. <laughs> oh, no, this would be violent, uh, let's see, violent property, murder, rape, robbery, assault, burglary, theft, or vehicle theft. Which one do you want? Okay, uh, what's the relationship of rapes to guns? All right, murders per 100,000, let's see. The worst states are District of Columbia, 
This is a 2010 thing. Florida, Louisiana, Maryland, Missouri, South Carolina, Nevada, New Mexico, Michigan, Mississippi, Tennessee, Arizona, Delaware, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, Texas, California, North Carolina, Virginia, Arkansas. Um, Are you doing best to work so Alaska, worse? New York, Alabama, New Jersey, Ohio, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, West Virginia, Nebraska, Rhode Island, Wisconsin, Colorado, Washington, Montana, Oregon, Utah, Hawaii, Maine, uh, Minnesota, South Dakota, Wyoming, Idaho, North Dakota, Iowa, Vermont, and then New Hampshire is the last. So it's the least in New Hampshire. Uh, okay, to give you an example, um, this is from Wikipedia from 2010. Um, Maine, we had 11 uh, number of gun murders, with a 45% of the state owning guns. Yeah, and uh, other murders all year. You, you, you know what's really interesting about going through that? That's cool. No, but you know what's really interesting about you going through that list in that order? Yeah. Is think how low on that list Colorado is, but then think about what's put Colorado on the map. Yeah, Colorado's pretty far down there. Yeah, they're really low on the list, but they have Columbine and the other tragedy. So it, it, it's like... It, Overall, they're actually a pretty safe place statistically regarding. Yeah, so half of your that eleven number though, Bob, it's saying forty-five, twenty percent of those eleven murders was was used with a gun. Yeah. So, well, I'm looking at the number of gun murders. Yeah. In that category. Well, the other thing y'all need to do though, if you're gonna really do apples to apples, it's not just the number of murders, but the number of murders in terms of percentage of population. So murders per capita. Yeah, uh, Maine was 1.8. What's the population? One point, uh, just about that. Yeah, because it, 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 because you have to, you have to put them on the same scale. Let's see, Maine. Maine um, is. Uh, I had 20, I had 24 murders in 2010. It's 11, at 1.8. Yeah. 11 of them were related to gun violence, uh, guns. At, so it's 45.8 percent of your murders are gun related. With a 1.8 per 100,000. Okay. You really think we're going to. And it's got a very low Brady score. <laughs> I wonder why. It wouldn't be all the hunting that people do up here. <laughs> well, oh, it, hey, it, hunting's not the reason we have a Second Amendment. I forgot. California's at 4.9, Texas is at 5.0. We have 64.6% uh, of, of the murders were with uh, guns, according to this 2010 statistic. I, I, I mean, granted, it's Wikipedia, so take it with a grain of salt. But. Yeah. <laughs> but how many of those are legally purchased guns, too? That's, the that, that's what no one ever asks. It, it, they, they just say, oh, it's gun related. Well, no shit. Bad guys have guns. Yeah. Why is, why is Michigan so high? And crazy good guys have guns, Boy. too. Crazy good guys are the ones that shoot up schools. Nevada, New Mexico? New Mexico is a liberal state. What's up with that? I love New Hampshire and how they have a lower murder rate than me. Alabama? <laughs> Pennsylvania? What? Pennsylvania has a higher rate than we do. And their Brady score is a 26. I was just saying, California has a Brady score of 80. <laughs> Yeah, and Texas has a score of six. <laughs> I was going to say, Maine's actually lower than Texas. Lower no, than te Texas, te te Texas um, has a lot of fucked up things with it, but one thing I will say about Texas is, for the most part, there is a common sense regarding firearms in Texas. Actually, California has a, has a score of 80, but yet we have 64% of ours is gun crimes, 69% is gun crimes in, in, in California, and they have a, a greater score of 80. You know, that's funny when you bring it up, given that the people who are most outraged about Colorado wanting to do the bans they're uh, debating in their Senate right now, and I think they're still debating them, I don't think they've actually made them law yet, but uh, it's all the Californians who are threatening Colorado if they pass them. That's funny, don't you think? Yeah. Well, it's no so different. Yeah. I was gonna say it's no different than us getting all the people from Mass up here. <laughs> that, that's what? why people. Well, no, that's why they say there's two mains. You have, you know what I mean by that. You have the people up in the county. 
<laughs> and you have the people in southern Maine. New York has 60% of their crimes are committed with gun, and yet they have a 62 Brady score. Correlation. Now, is that New York State or New York City? New York State. Now, Bob, uh, can you see the link I sent you? It says that uh, New York State has um, 6.1, uh, 8.1 uh, firearm gun deaths per capita, and over in my state it says there's a uh, uh, 3.5. What is it? Yeah, it's the one I sent you. Oh. Hey, check this out. This is, this, this, is percentage, this, is, this is the percentage of crime by guns, states in order. Illinois, Louisiana, Delaware, Missouri, District of Columbia, Michigan, Connecticut, South Carolina, Mississippi, Indiana, Arkansas, Georgia, Pennsylvania, California, Maryland, Florida, Virginia, Alabama, New Jersey, Ohio, Arizona, then finally Texas, <clears throat> Kentucky, North Carolina, Wisconsin, Kansas, Nebraska, Wyoming, Washington, Tennessee, Alaska, New York, uh, Oklahoma, Minnesota, Montana, South Dakota, Idaho, New Mexico, Massachusetts, Colorado, Iowa, Rhode Island, Nevada, West Virginia, Oregon, Maine, North Dakota, Utah, New Hampshire, Hawaii, and Vermont. Yeah, I have a website I look for for any statistics. It's always different. So. Well, but that's why no, I'm... No, you can go to that wiki page. What is that? It's in sort of. You can sort the columns. Yeah, well, but, and the thing that I want to know and the, that is hard to find when you're researching on the web is you can know in the article, you can read the article's date, but it doesn't necessarily tell you the source statistic date. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. like, just because it's a 2010 article, it may, it may be a 2010 article using 2004 numbers. Uh, it doesn't say what the source is. That's the problem. Yeah. It says murders in the United States by state 2010. Um, BradyCampaign.org. Yeah, so they do year release. That yeah, that says 2010 state rankings. Okay, so yeah, it's a, it, so it's 010. We barely should have hard statistics on 011 by now. It's like for people who are wondering why are we talking about 2010 and 2013, it's because it takes a little bit of time for the statistics to be cross-referenced and file out. The raw report comes out about six months later, but. It, it takes a while to get them into actually a apples to apples usable metric. <laughs> I, I I just say you know we should enable people and make you know better uh, and newer licenses, more advanced licenses that require you know proficiency tests and, and more training so that we can get people in front and what is today a grunt free zone that would satisfy the people that have a genuine fear of firearms to say hey. They get as much training as a police officer. Well, and you know what? That's one thing both sides of issues like this adamantly agree on. People who are not afraid of guns do not want yahoos with firearms. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no, I mean it. it. You know, it's like you, you have the joke like in The Simpsons where Homer Simpson uses his pistol to open his beer can, and we're just like, uh, can I punch him in the head and take his gun from him? It's like... <laughs> I know that there's Second Amendment. I, I, I mean, so there's people that will say, well, Second Amendment, Second Amendment doesn't matter and all that stuff. But that, I well, don't no. think we can, we're regressing any, any we're not going to go The reality is. Backwards. I mean, state by state, even if Texas votes for gun-free zones for Friday night, which is, which is mostly a conservative state, how do you convince the, how do you convince, because it is a political thing. Regardless of, of, of laws that can be tried and things, I'm sure if, if the people want to advocate the Second Amendment, then take it to the Supreme Court. But I guarantee it's still going to end up in the political arena. Well, no, and it's going to end up in the political I arena. Say, no, just, and I, and I, 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 you're bringing up the Second Amendment. I want to make one thing perfectly clear. There's several things on debates in a few states. Colorado's one of them. I want to say Connecticut's another one, where they're bringing bills before their state houses and senates. Not not DC, they're states. And the reality is if individual states choose to do this, it's perfectly constitutional. It is no violation of the Second Amendment at all. There's a lot of people who aren't going to do commerce with or visit or go to those states as a result, but that's a different matter. It's not unconstitutional for a state to decide to impose rules on firearms, even if they don't make any sense at all. Well, states are given that which is not enumerated, but the person would have to take it to the Supreme Court if they felt it violated the federal 
amend, you know, the Second Amendment, because it would then have jurisdiction. But, but yes, yeah, states are given a lot of more power and control. Yeah, no, the, the, like Colorado's, like, the, like one of the ones that made the news is Colorado, all these bands Colorado's trying to do. And it's got a lot of people mad at Colorado. Um, but it's perfectly constitutional within the federal constitution. I don't know Colorado's state constitution well enough to know if there would be any argument to make yeah, there. Yeah, see, didn't New York kind of ban guns outright and they lost the Supreme Court or some shit like that, or DC or whatever? Well, no, that, but that's not what anybody's trying to do. They're just trying... Yeah, no. Yeah. Well, I'm saying as an example of a state doing something that then would get challenged to the constitutionality of a state law, but states are deaf. It's, states have much more power in terms of police power than the federal government. That's what people don't understand when, when Romney said his plan was meant state by state, because states constitutionally have that police power, not the federal government. Well, and it's actually a good thing because the reality is the United States is a collection of 50 independent little countries that work in a union. And different things work for different ones. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, so, it, you know, and some states in the yeah, U.S. But the, be, but the lack of legal firearms they work for New York. Yeah, but well, and some states in the in the U.S. Uh, their state constitutions further reflect that to give their individual counties and cities that same respective authority, but not all. That that's not a universal thing. So it's just yeah. You know, but it, the problem here, but the real problem with the issue is like when we were talking about the panic. You know, it's it's ignorance and cosmetics and science and other things, and it's not. Not a single thing that has been proposed in a single state in the Fed anywhere would remotely have addressed the things that have spurred this latest gun panic, which is the two uh, mass shooting incidents. You know, it all, I, you know, I'm getting sick of this yo-yo because I remember when Columbine and all the school shootings started happening. It's like, oh, we need zero tolerance. We need to lock all schools down. Turn them into prisons. It's like, and did anything we do there would it have prevented anything? No. Hey, Columbine happened during the Chris Sullivan ban. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> so, so did Jonesboro. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it's, my personal opinion on all of this shit is it when you wrap up and constrain people and and it's a, a, you're asking you're pouring gasoline on a fire and it tightening things up more is not gonna stop it it's especially things that's all a circus it's all just hoopla designed to go ha, we've done something and you know I, I don't want I don't want to play down what happened at Sandy Hook at all but not to sound like an ass when I say this, but how much did a lockdown help, honestly? Are they, I don't think they locked down. I mean, in any of the, any of these, though. Well, Lock it, I think, locking down I think, the least. Well, I think the idea of a lockdown, like we were discussing that, you know, the, the, there's, you know, I, I guess it's probably classic because my, my oldest son came back and said they started doing these lockdown policies too, um, ever since Sandy Hook, but, the thing of it is, is that if your school is designed in such a way where there's only one door in or out of your classroom and the perpetrator is able to get in, God forbid what happens there. Because then the, that, you're, you're, he's in, his, his proficiency won't matter. Fish uh, in a barrel. And, yeah. They, they can't run anywhere. Now, my, my, older, my oldest son's school, he has, inside the school itself, it's open and it's cubicles, so people could run. Now, it could be argued that, well, they can't get into a locked, safe room. You know, they have to run for their lives. That, that, that is a good point. Um, so it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a debate between what is the tactical situation at hand. If, if they get, if they're able to kick down the door, then it's, it's, it's very tragic because there's only one entrance and exit, which is the same. And he can just sit there at the, uh, he or she can just sit there at the uh, doorway and, like, yeah, it's just that. So, uh, you know, that scares the shit out of me. Okay, because you can do a lockdown, and the lockdown only works, um, I think, if they if they give the notice. But didn't the guy in Sandy Hook kill the administrators first before they can initiate a, a lockdown protocol? Although you would think that people would start hearing the gunshots. I'm not sure. Um, 
Well, but it, it, you're, you're also asking a lot out of people. The reality is, the initial reaction out of most people in that scenario is the deer in the headlights reaction. It's like, is this really going on? <laughs> and that moment, yeah. of end, that moment of indecision really is all it takes. <sighs> yeah. Well, here it is. Look at this. School safety experts, because I was Googling this, because I was seeing a Sandy Hook, I was trying to see if Sandy Hook had that, but uh, it says, let's see, it says, so school safety experts disagree on lockdown procedures after Newton, sh uh, Newton shooting. See, and I'm kind of, let's see what they have to say. A lot of fire drills, schools have been conducting lockdown drills, often known as active shooter drills, since the Columbine massacre in 1999. Um, they... But safety officials do not agree yet on what teachers and students should do when the homicidal gunman in the basement school. That's what I'm torn on too. I, I would, I would, because well, but what you're person. getting, what you're getting at there is the fundamental problem of across the board. We're trying to make a one size fits all universal right. solution, and it yeah. really is yes. in each individual case. Different things are best. Exactly. And schools' architecture is different. Different materials. You know, I've seen some schools made out of very flimsy wall columns and others uh, that are older out of solid concrete. You know, these come into a tactical play if you really want to say, why do you need to get serious about it? And, I, I, and I'm all on board on making a, a, a plan on what is best for that school's design and what a door can withstand. You know, what, what can, how much pressure can, can a, lock, a classroom locked door handle? If not much, then a lockdown is not going to do you much good. Then you just put everybody in a very dire situation, um, which is, so it says, this guy is saying, uh, at Sandy Hook Elementary School, teachers, staff, and students have been drilled on how to handle such a situation. Uh, we practice it, and they knew what to do, and you just think about protecting the kids and just doing the right thing. Uh, Liberty Clerk Mary Ann Jacobs said, she said, she said, had been drilled to send the kids in the library to a back closet between the bookshelves, a plan developed in advance. All right, so you have to have a certain amount of fire drills and evacuation drills and a certain amount of lockdown drills. She said, kids know the routine and the teachers know the routine and everyone has a spot, has a spot in the room where they're supposed to go. School safety experts Ken, this Ken guy told ABC News that he thinks that Sandy Hook teachers did what they could to protect the students. It does sound as though the teachers did everything humanly possible down to risking their lives. I know, I, I, heard, I read about those uh, valiant, uh, valiant teachers, that what they did uh, to protect the children in the community school. The school's principal and five other adults died in the Sandy Hook school shooting in the community. So the teachers teaching kids to lock down Securing the rooms, and in some cases, teachers stepping forth to protect the children at the risk of their own lives is something that we see occurring more and more over the years in school safety, this guy said. Uh, he had others particularly praise the actions of the first grade. Okay, so where is the disagreements? But, but, oh, but former SWAT officer Craig told ABC News that he thinks existing like number. Okay, here we go. So a SWAT officer, which is going to be more tactically minded, I guess, is going to disagree with it. Um, she go, he goes, what she, this teacher did, was a fantastic move. Uh, who founded a school safety program called ALICE, which stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, and Counter Evacuate. Was, the, was she taught that move? Did every teacher know to lock the door and also how to barricade it? If that's the case, why weren't other teachers taught that? Uh, most schools tell teachers to lock their doors and sit quietly until help arrives. Uh, Typical of the procedures obtained by ABC News. Uh, what? Why would they say that? Outlined by New Jersey School District that calls their drills lockdown yellow. Uh, instructions to the students include go to the room nearest your location in the hallway. No one will be able to leave the room for any reason. See, my oldest son's school don't, don't have rooms. It's an open cubicle type thing. Silence must be maintained. Use of cell phones are not permitted. Make sure you're, you are marked present. Do not leave the class number until directed by the PA system. Uh, uh, bit, hold on, bit, hold on one second. All right, sorry about that. I had to put the break in. Um, well, but no, but what you're getting at there, and, and, and one of the underlying things is there's there's people whose mentality is, okay, how do we work this horrible problem? 
Damn! Like, uh, he hit exactly. I'm reading on. Hold on, guys. They hit it. Here's, this is the SWAT commander talking. He says, we've taught a generation of Americans to be passive. And yes. Sad yes. And wait for police. The, 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 the SWAT officer said, whose wife was an elementary school principal in Texas at the time of the Columbine attack. We don't recommend just locking a door because locked doors have been defeated before, just like I talked about. Um, try to make yourself as hard a target as possible. And, and so that right yeah. there is what I was going to get at. The it, it, Most of the actions that are taken are about the uh, feeling like you're in charge rather than teaching you how to get in charge of the situation in the way you can. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a different mentality. There's the, well, I did everything they told me, therefore I'm in charge, versus the, what, how do I need to react to the situation to be as in charge as humanly yes. possible? Yes, because let me tell you, the gunman not being proficient is going to have a much harder time shooting students who are all fucking running every damn which direction and then eventually eva evacuating school. Like, my son's school, like I said, is all open except for the outside bungalows. Um, because this is what Texas does when schools get bigger, they build these temporary makeshift things. But inside the school... Yeah, they get rid they, of all the athletics fields and fill them with portables. Yeah, they, would, they can all easily... They're, they, they're not confined. Um, they can all easily just run. And, and run out of the school and, and, and make it, making themselves much harder targets. And that's this, this is what I understands completely. Um, it, but the thing of it is, is that somebody, I can see the argument where people say, well, what's your policy? Just to run out of the school? I mean, it doesn't sound good on paper because most people, most people don't think tactically. But, um, well, but again, that, that's the thing. It, it, it's the actions being taken and the general mentality in creating the policies isn't about how effective is it. It's how does it look? What is the PR? What is the feel of this policy? Not... The solution is panic. <laughs> yeah, and then see, but no, you could say, look, depending on the location of the shooter, the rest of the kids, you know, the rest of the... They could, of course I agree in locking doors. Because it slows the perpetrator down, but doors can be defeated. But my objective would be to get, I mean, if it were me, I would say get as many people outside and away from the school as possible. Because as you're retreating, hopefully cops are called, you're retreating in forces, or if hopefully we can ever have the plan. Yeah, yeah, like you know, Ben, I just had, I, I, my, mind, my, my mind just thought of a nightmare scenario. Lockdown is issued at a school, and before the police can be called, the administrators are taken out. And in the middle of lockdown, nobody else is allowed to call the cops. Because the, the kids can't use their cell phone, they can't call 911, they can't do it, and nobody's allowed to ask for help. Well, a lot of the staff and the teachers have cell phones. If they hear gunshots, I'm sure they're going to call. So what, my, what I'm trying to say is that evacuation of the school is, 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 I think, a much more proactive philosophy based upon the location, of course. But that, but that means, you know, teachers are going to have to, you know, obviously teachers were heroic in Sandy Hook, so I don't think it's that far of a stretch for a teacher to say, Okay, I hear the shooting over there. I know the exits are over here. Let's run for it and make make you know all the children much harder targets to hit. And you know, I know they have a cell phone. And let's say the staff is shot and the kids are running outside. And once they're outside, it's even harder. Now you know, shit. It's like your your volume for ratio space. Ben, to ben do you want to know the real reason that isn't uh, one of the plans on, on the table? Liability. If the teacher tries to escort the students to safety and they wind up getting hurt in the process, the teacher, district, and school are 100% culpable for every single thing that happened to every one of those kids they were trying to save. Well, I'm just going to tell you, I, I, I don't like this passive, like this SWAT guy saying, man, once your, your, your door is defeated, I can't even imagine the fear at that point. Once he's defeated, he or she's defeated your defenses, and, and there's you. nowhere to run. That just scared that 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 idea, guys, frightens me more than anything. And let me tell you, a shotgun, which the which the Sandy Hook guy had, can defeat one of those doors rather easy. The other thing, a shotgun, you can use his foot. 
Yeah. You can do door breaching and all that shit with it. And, and, and it just it frightens me a little bit, you know, a lot actually, that, that, you know, we need to, if we're really talking about saving kids' lives, like Piers Morgan says, well, then we need to get tactical. We're going to have to start uh, <laughs> introducing security policies and, and tactics into, into, into teaching. And like I was saying before, start let's let's have states start making people get licenses and, and, and proficiency training to get to be able to carry on campus. So a teacher who wants to do that can do so and be more proactive than just sitting there. I can't even imagine the horror those heroic teachers had at Sandy Hook putting themselves in front of the students. You know, they're so heroic for doing it, but that moment, once your defenses are down and the guy's broken into your room, it's just unimaginable. See, and, that, and that's the thing, I would look, you know, I would look at peers and say, you know what, dude, if we're really talking about saving lives, then let's talk about saving lives. Let, let's really talk about saving lives instead of bullshit. Nobody wants to talk about saving lives. I wish that was the conversation we were having. Everybody wants to just chase the boogeyman. Here's the problem. If you start talking about the actual problem and working about saving lives, you have to acknowledge a bunch of other things that we prefer to pretend don't exist. And you have to acknowledge the possibility a failure, you have to think about the fact that uh, this is a potentially out of control situation that doesn't have a guaranteed win and a whole mess of other factors. And it's like, that's not what we want. We want the, oh, where's the easy answer? Where's the easy solution? Where's the, it's just going to magically work. You know, this is the single thing. This isn't complex at all. If we just get rid of this, we're all magically safe. That's the answer we want. That answer doesn't exist. Yeah. <sighs> wow, wow, you're such a downer, man. <laughs> I'm, huh? You're such a downer. Yeah. I'm a pragmatist. It it's, an atro it's an atrocity. And I don't know what's... You know, the, the more and more finding these mass killing guys are all on psychotropic drugs, you know, these fucking mental pills and shit. Hey, you know, that's the bit that scares me the most, but not for the reasons most people think, because the, the, the underlying bandwagon that's being circulated around is we have to do something about mental health, but the, the tone it's taking isn't about acknowledging mental health or actually addressing the problems of mental health. It's about how do we lock these people away and keep them away from society? And how do we make it, you know, there's something wrong with the country when you can't just send the white coat people and then lock somebody away without a trial. And, and, and I, I, I know I'm going to get no sympathy from the country right now for pointing that out, but there is a reason we have those hearings, those trials, those other things, so we can't use the psychiatric corner as this imprisonment without trial lock people we don't like away shit. I am sorry, but and it it's the most. Well, what about psychiatric people? I know that prevent them from getting fired up. Not necessarily lock them away. Kami, do you know how many people there are with psychiatric conditions that are 100 percent? functional in society that you wouldn't know they have a psychiatric condition unless they chose to disclose it to you? Holy fuck, man. I'm reading this thing that happened today with the 14 stab. Um, this guy was slitting people's throats, man. Jesus. This one, this uh, person, she said, or yeah, she said, or he said, uh, he was sitting in the cafeteria with some friends and a girl clutching her neck, walked in yelling, he's stabbing people, he's stabbing people. She yelled after being stabbed in the neck? Well, I guess so, man. Fuck he must have missed. Thank oh, God. Either that or he wasn't very accurate. <laughs> and see, everybody's like, I don't know why he would do that. I can't believe he would do it. He seemed normal. They always seem normal. That's the other thing. It, it, that, that's, that, that's that bullshit feeling. It feels. Yeah. We don't know. It feels faster. 
<laughs> yeah, I, uh, well, what, what's the old phrase they used to say? It's always the quiet ones, so I make sure I speak loudly. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. And it, uh, you know... You know what, I mean, It's a fucked up world! We got some crazy, crazy, crazy people, man. But we need to... Be, but I, I, I stress why I agree adamantly we need to be very careful about not running down that slippery slope. Well, yeah, but you know why patients' rights became what it was? Because they were really abusing those institutions. That, that's, that's the thing. And there are several people that, in light of recent things going on, that would be more than happy to send it back there. And I'm like, well, no! I think, if, I think if we had a new crop of institutions, I don't think the same abuses would occur. My fear You have a lot more faith in people than I do. Huh? You have a lot more faith in people than I do. No, 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 no. I don't think the institutions, because, man, now we have a lot more laws. Look, I program for psychiatry. Psych but there's positive. people who want to remove, laws. but there's people who want to remove all those laws, because they're in the way. No, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, no, no. You don't have to remove a lot of the laws. The majority can actually stay intact for practice, for practice. What I'm worried about is <laughs> what qualifies someone to be committed. That, that's my problem. Because so you, you could just then start changing policy arbitrarily and say, well, yeah, you're fucked up. You're going to be committed. You know, it's like... Yeah, and that's, that's, what, I, that's what I'm scared... That, that's what I'm actually more scared of than banning weapons and everything else, that when we finally do direct our attention towards working the actual problem and the fact that mental illness does have a part in this, that we're going to roll it back to the, oh, um, you're not, you, you don't think right. Bye. <laughs> Jesus. All right, so the guy was subdued and arrested. So he slashed at people's faces and necks. Oh, that Lone Star Community College is right down this, uh, actually, it's right over by the freeway by my house. Let's see. Hmm. At least this guy didn't think he was the Joker. No, you know what, though? But shit like this... It, it puts shit in your head, like, so now when you go, God, you're at risk, you know, we are at risk anywhere. That's the whole point of carrying a CHL and shit, but I mean, fuck. You know, goddamn crazy people, we gotta, I mean, this is bullshit. It, you, you, but you know what? That, I, uh, uh, maybe this is just me. I figured out when I was nine or ten years old that I was at risk everywhere, you know? And I, had, I had a tactical eye, I had an eye for security. I damn near, it was one of the few times I damn near got drop slapped. We're walking around the international terminal and airport, and I'm pointing out how unsecure it is. You know, this is pre-9-11, pre-everything. It's it's but I, my mind thought that way. And I realized I'm not safe. And I'm like, I'm okay with it. I, I will react to whatever the hell comes in front of me. Most people's reaction to the realization they're not safe is, how do I get safe? How do I get safe? You don't. You can't be safe. It, 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 I'm sorry, that's the nature of the world. There's risk. The bus can hit you. This, it, there is no safe. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, a, it's a sad thing, but it, it's the reality. I mean, it's... You can just congratulations, America. You're not safe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm reading some of these comments. So the, the gun controller nuts are going, "See, the stabbing is more proof that, like, look, the the, the nimwits don't understand the difference between death and these people." No, what we're talking about is, we don't need to make the delineation. What we're making the delineation for this person is saying, "Oh, this is more proof that we need to get rid of guns." The delineation we're making is that our, if we're talking about Saving lives is not about the tool. It, it, it is not about the tool. It, any safety could be breached. The kids are much smaller, which is another, you know, another thing. A a a nine millimeter round for a very for a for a first grader uh, in terms of volume is it's actually worse than a fifty caliber. Yeah, I guarantee you, you take the knife to a, a much much smaller kid. Uh, you would I, I would hate to think of also the damage that could you know also occur in, in loss of life. All right, uh, we're talking about adults. And uh, and by the way, uh, this person is commenting on there, uh, talking about that most people who are shot at, you know, I say it's like adults, 
I can't tell you how many cases they go to freaking Ben Todd and their lives are saved being gunshot, you know, gunshot victims. We got, we got a whole shitload of people that, got, that get shot and survive. Unfortunately, because the size of a human being and the damage a caliber can do to a, to a, to a, a small, small first grader uh, is, is, is a very different thing. Any weapon, any weapon you use, a, a baseball bat versus an adult versus a first grader. Yeah, I, 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 I don't have the statistics inherently in front of me, but I want to say if you're much younger than 13 or 14, thereabouts, it, it's the survival rate drops off exponentially. It, it just because of the relative size to the wounds and so forth. Right. That talking I about. mean, you're going to tell me uh, if I take a baseball bat to a first grader versus an adult, I mean, you're going to want to say those results are the same. This is why their logic doesn't make sense. What our logic is, is that guns do save lives. Guns, and, you know, we, if we take something away, something else, something else is used and, can, and your safety is violated. Go and tell them, oh, that have to live with the stars or in a fucking trauma room, what, you know, whatever. It, the, the thing of it is, is we want more security, we, and with the way we're talking about doing it is not taking away guns, because like I said, the murder rate went up in, in the UK. We have clear evidence of murder rates going up when good people are not able as effectively to defend themselves. And it, if we enable people to get higher classification of licenses in these schools, that can carry, I guarantee you this guy probably would have been shot. You know, because then you don't need as many officers. The well, reason why we have CHLs and the whole point is to protect ourselves, you know, for you know to protect us, but what a jackass. A freaking knife to a freaking first grader is, is, is far worse than a knife to a freaking adult dude. I mean Jesus. I don't think people want to understand that don't know anything about ballistics, what ballistics will do to a, to a small baby in a first grader versus what they will do to an adult. It is a big hole compared to the size of its body. Yeah. All right. Well, it's yeah. not just that. It's the, it's the amount of blood you can lose, the time involved, everything else. I mean, it's a, a, a kid can bleed out. It, 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 you, relatively speaking, you're pumping about you're pumping blood at the same rate, but the volume in a little body versus a large body, it, the little body can bleed out before it's even possible to get them to the hospital. Yeah. There isn't time to put blood in or anything else. You know, it's just and I, I guarantee you the survival rate for the human body when it's diminished of all fluid is rather small. <laughs> it cannot function in that state for a very long period at all. Yeah, there's there's actually YouTube. I think there's some YouTube videos where there's adults getting shot, like like uh, like forty cal, forty five, and walk away, and fucking come back. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh yeah. I can't tell you how many times, like even even with rifles and all sorts of shit, people. Ben Tob is. Let me tell you, they get evac'd over to Bentov. We have lots of gunshot wound survivors, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's why. Right. Right. Well, that's why people say a shotgun because of stopping power. Believe it or not, a 22 LR can kill someone, but if they're coming at you, is it likely to stop that person? Look, let's let's put it this way: you can shoot your 22 LR at, at a perpetrator coming at your house, and it may be a lethal shot. It went in their body, they're gonna bleed internally, but it may take hours for them to finally bleed bleed out completely. In the meantime, they're fucking kicking your ass. Exactly. The two weapons you, the two weapons you want for it on you. The right? two weapons you want for stopping power right. are either a shotgun or some yeah. form of auto simply because of the continued concussion keeps pushing them back. Right, if you can get off as many rounds as you can. Um, so and it's not and, and, and that close and yeah. that close range the caliber really doesn't make a difference in that regard. It's the auto Glock action. That's it, right. I don't even want an AR-15. I mean, I you know I of course I know, but I, I don't I wouldn't use it for a, a home invasion either. It is it is notorious for high velocity going through the perpetrators and then still coming at your ass. So you got to still attack them. And keep going and going and going, you know, until they do collapse. Versus like my my Mossberg, 
that I got double up box shot in there. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's gonna put them. It's, I'm pretty sure it's gonna push the motherfucker back. Um, you know, and and end it, and then his his uh, his or her attack. I, I was gonna say that's why most people, if they want a bullet to stop somebody, they go with like a forty-five. Yeah, but even yeah. I've seen like the forty people handguns. Yeah, but it's much more effective than nine millimeter or a magnum. No, yeah. oh, no, magnum. Magnums have a completely different problem. Those go through people more. A forty-five yeah. is a big, slow bullet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Slower velocity. It, it, it has the oomph. Oh, it has the oomph mm-hmm. power to it. More, uh, less than the. Uh, That's why people with magnums have like little brace so they can like recoil. Yeah. Well, and, and the reality is, honestly, for like a home invasion scenario, I kind of like the idea of a high cal uh, of a, a high bullet. Uh, shotgun, something like uh, I, I want to be spiteful. I want to fill your ass full of rock salt. <laughs> <laughs> rock salt well, with stopping power. You know, it's some... Um... Uh, bitch, should I tell them about some of the specialty rounds that some gun manufacturers... Oh, shit, yeah. yeah. The flechette rounds are probably the funnest ones, though. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you can literally turn someone's ass into a pincushion. <laughs> they're, they're, you know what? They're, they're going to be thinking about what was I thinking going into that place as they s- can't sit down for a while. Oh, 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 or you got the ones that are, what What are they? It's, are they covered in, oh crap, it's a mix of double on buck and like a slug. Uh, I think they're called like jackhammer rounds or something. It's some, I, 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 I heard those are legal. <laughs> No, they're only illegal in a few places. They're actually largely legal in the states. I don't personally it, it, it's like. It's mostly them. legal in California, New York, uh, Florida. Uh, no, not Florida. Um, what the hell else is there? It's the typical liberal states, Massachusetts, and whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, the, then you got some other crazy rounds that are like, oh, God. There's one that's like, a, I kid you not, they took two. Uh, they double up box and they put a friggin metal wire across them. Uh, so yes, it's, yeah, I see they're, they're, they're like a bola, but it's like the, the, some of the rounds that some of the, the friggin ammo companies come up with are just like crazy. But, uh, Never uh, underestimate uh, human ingenuity. <laughs> but I think the flechette rounds are great because it's like, oh, I'm not going to kill you, I'm just going to hurt you a whole lot so you can't do anything. <laughs> Well, and honestly, look at, this. look at this. The guy, the guy who stabbed people, said he had fantasies of stabbing people to death since he was in elementary school. So he should have been shot. <laughs> Jesus, fuck, man. Bit. This is why I like Texas. You guys have like an express lane for death row. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Which you know what? I am for people like him. I am completely fine with it happening. Yeah, that's kind of what we're talking about. Like, well, no, but, my, but, but I, I want to stress, just like with the argument we had, oh, well, the video game made me do it. The, what about the other nine people who had the same thoughts but didn't act on them? No, 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 no. I, I have no problem with those people. I'm talking about the people that do this shit. Not like they have, like, absolute fantasies about, like, they somehow, like, kill animals and shit. Well, what I'm concerned with is people like this making some type of, oh, I need to go to the nut house deal, and, oh, sorry, I need to go to the mental hospital. Oh, oh that, you know, that's another thing I, I want to cover. If you really do the insanity defense, here's what happens. You get off, you go to the hospital, the hospital gets you good, and then you stay in trial. <laughs> you don't get off. You get locked up in a, in a facility. That's, in some cases, not as good as the prison you would have got locked into. And then they get you better, and then you go before a judge and a jury. You know, it's like it still happens. You don't, you, don't, you don't get out. It doesn't get, people think the insanity defense gets you out. No, the insanity defense just adds more turmoil. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, but what the insane defense, like, after, like, during the trial, if you convince the jury you're insane, what, like, happens, that, like, that wasn't you. That was your mental health. Then you go to a mental health facility. 
The perception, the perception of the public is like not guilty by mental insanity and we let you out the door in society. No, if you're not guilty by mental insanity, it means you're clinically insane and not and a danger to society and you're institutionally committed. You're going to jail regardless. <laughs> what is just a white pad in jail? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you're more likely to get out of that one, right? <laughs> When you finally get out of that one, you're then put before trial. Uh, so if you if you finally become sane and work through and get back sane, then you go before trial. So then you get to have a trial and face going to jail. You know, it, 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 and then you get to serve your jail time. That, that's the way the insanity defense works. It, it's not like, oh, well, okay, you, I'm sorry, you were clinically insane. Go out the door and be clinically insane. No, I didn't know how it works. <laughs> now, there's, there's some medication that made him do it or something. That, that, that is temporary insanity, and uh, the burden of proof is basically that the altered state was single incident, no longer exists, and will never exist again. And that's a very high burden of proof. <laughs> it's, it's basically like saying, oh, getting drunk made me do it, but alcohol doesn't exist on Earth anymore. <laughs> that like, oh, the alcohol made me do it, but I chose to get drunk. We've lost. Yeah, it. actually, we had shootings. To be honest with you, it was uh, what was it? A few months ago, we had a, a shooting at the a Lone Star, and they survived. You, you notice you never hear about the survivals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the thing is, like, I'm reading these liberal comments. These fucking idiots, man. If we had a gun, he, you wouldn't have 14. Wouldn't they'd all be dead? No, they wouldn't. No, they wouldn't. I, I mean, this no. is. I was going to say, because the focus is not on the initial target anymore, the focus is on, from the shooter is going to be on the person that's trying to stop him from doing what he was originally intending to do. Yeah, so I'm, saying I'm, saying I'm, saying yeah. Yeah. I'm saying sometimes survivors, they're kind of like injured for life, or they have like an organ fucked up, or they're like paralyzed or something. Mm. That's yeah, unfortunate. That's unfortunate. People will never understand that the point of reason of the Second Amendment in part is, 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 is the defense of the citizenry. You as an individual may be brought from the state and for yourself against maybe your fellow, your fellow citizen if they're I thought the point of the Second Amendment was to kill cops. <laughs> no, come on. Oh. I'm just saying that, that this, it's, a, it's a nonsensical argument to say to go the other direction to say let's just remove, remove, remove. It's clear in other, in other, in other countries, uh, like Piers Morgan's own UK, if the murder rate goes up, they just found something else. And a gun is not, I can tell it. Go ahead, go ahead, Bob. I was going to say, people who want to kill will find other ways to kill. Rather, it's That's themselves right. or others. Is it a knife? Is it a car? Is it a brick? Is it a fucking, you know, wamp? Is it a letter opener? Take your pick. Is it a credit gun? Yeah. And is, it, is, it, yeah. is it a nail gun? I mean, you know, yeah. whatever. Let me explain something. The Marine Corps, which I cannot confirm, they, they, they basically always had a mantra that they drove into every Marine proficiency with shooting. Not, not so much with when I was in the Army. They didn't do it. That wasn't touted at all. I mean, the Marines came up with the whole mantra, one shot, one kill. But the, 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 reason, the reason being of this is one shot fired into a, into a person does not does not equate to death. It, not it, where you shoot them. And well, no, in it's fact, in it's fact, like it depends on where you stab them. But, but it, it, isn't it tactically more sound, especially if your goal is to uh, create chaos? Another thing to wound, not kill, so that basically a wounded guy takes one to three guys out because somebody then has to carry him out, and uh, it, it, it's. Tactically, more sound not to kill. Uh, uh, well, I mean, but not to kill efficiently, for lack of a better word. <laughs> I mean, like, all right. So they're talking about there's like this uh, Osaka School massacre, right? Which was a happened in 2001. It happened in, a mil in an elementary school. Eight kids were were uh, were murdered. Now, uh, let me see what grade level they were. 
because that's that, that like I said this is important if we're really if we're really about saving lives we need to understand the problem and tactics involved not just say fan guns because they're dangerous but they are yeah so it isn't a car that's driving 100 miles down the fucking road legally too we should ba- well we should make it illegal to speed we already do but apparently people are gonna fucking break the law still <laughs> <laughs> All right. It seemed like it seemed like the victims were first were first year and the girls were second year, so maybe first and second graders. That, wait, 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 wait. That's, that uh, could be different. Was it elementary or was it uh, junior high? No, it's an elementary school. Right? Then that's either first and second grade or K and first. So that's there five and six year olds or six and seven year olds. Yeah. So there you go. Eight die in a stabbing. Uh, why? Probably like we were talking about. It's unfortunate that the size, the, our size has a lot to do with the amount of damage a, a instrument uh, used to kill uh, can do. Like I said, a baseball bat uh, versus a fir- first year old is not the same ver- of a baseball bat versus a, a full grown wing. Yeah, I mean, really, until you reach about the size of an average 10 to 12 year old, you are, you're not large enough that you're body can really weather the, even start to weather the same type of damage that a more full-grown human can. Mm-hmm. And even then, you're, pre- you're, you're susceptible. You're, you're, you're going to be wounded significantly more, but you're, you have a chance of, you have a much better chance of survival. <laughs> Longer recuperating time. <laughs> It's a, it, you know, it's a little disturbing that we, we analyze the world this way. <laughs> hey, get shit done. <laughs> yeah, but it's a little morbid. <laughs> it really is. You know, it's... Just I'm saying, saying, I'm saying if they apologize for talking about stuff like this, you know, like, you know, like seriously say a lot, you know what I mean? But people don't want it. Well, people want an easy solution. No, people want a knee-jerk reaction without thoroughly thinking something through and listening to both sides of a fucking argument and coming up with an actual compromise because that's just too much fucking work. For the no, that's too much work for the American people. The immediate re- the, the immediate knee-jerk reaction is, oh, something happened. Why isn't it fixed? <laughs> yeah, then you get stupid thing. Uh, then you get stupid things like the Patriot Act. Uh, yeah. Hello, the Department of Homeland Security. I hope you're listening. Yeah. Yes, I said stupid things like the Patriot Act because I don't yeah, know. Yeah, 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 you, you know what? Is it too much to hope that sequestration will lead to the defunding of Homeland Security and the restoration of my civil rights? Is it too much to hope? Is it too yes. much to hope that the federal government will actually get its head out of its own ass for all its Yes, we're committing thought crimes and the government's listening. Here's another survivor. School shooting at Price Middle School in Atlanta, Georgia. It was they the guy got they said multiple shots were fired in the courtyard of this middle school. So that they're older in middle school. Um, I guarantee that our first grader probably wouldn't survive. Um, let's see. He was shot in the neck. But he survived. And survived. Yeah, see, then that's getting... That's He's 14. See, He's like 14. I said, once you hit 13, 14, you're at that size where there's enough time to get your ass to the hospital. <laughs> there's also the fact that um, the space in between things is large enough that you can have those lucky shots. No uh, no wounds. I guess that's what they call them now. But you know what I'm talking about. It's like it, it misses your vital organs and goes through the space in between or grazes without yeah. destroying. Yeah. It says the wounded boy was taken alert, conscious, and breathing. Which means it went, he was lucky as hell and it went straight around all his pipes. He must have been shot at a tendon or something. No, if you said it's in the neck, right? Yeah. Yeah, which That's means what it says in the yeah, which means it missed his tracheal. It missed it, it. It went through that whole space, where which is which is possible. There's actually enough room there for a really 
big ass thing to go straight through, but it's got to be on the right trajectory. Yeah, it feels like a centimeter, like differentially, and where he was, he wouldn't be living. I don't think he's complaining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he was one lucky son of a bitch. I'm just, all I'm going to say about the whole Second Amendment, an armed deterrence makes yeah, anyone, sure. uh, make yeah, a, yeah. A, anyone question. Yeah, but that's... It, but, it, but okay, but to play devil's advocate, that's why people want them banned because we have too many people not, you know, expressing themselves. That's okay, they're expressing themselves badly, so we can't allow any expression. <laughs> so okay, so I call for a constitutional convention. Oh wait, that makes me a traitor now if I go, if we go by the current uh, thought process here. Yes, you would be guilty of treason. Oh, hey, wait. I said I would agree to the Constitution. And if I remember correctly, the three-fourths majority in the Constitution Convention... Oh, hey, look, we can throw them all out. You're guilty of treason. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I had actually taken into consideration the whole Declaration of Independence is actually... No, no, what you, no, 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 what you need oh, to understand hold on, hold on. Is, is people don't, they, they didn't mean it that way. We, oh, oh, hold on. <laughs> I take the Declaration of Independence and you, you compare it to the Constitution. The Constitution is all the grievances and all the issues that the founders had in the Declaration put into the framework of a government. And addressing the fact that the Confederacy was not okay, uh, stable. <laughs> exactly. I was getting to that. What about the three fourths of a poor person thing? Three fifths of a person. That has been. Well, the Constitution. It's also been amended out. It's, it has been amended out with the 14th and 16th Amendment? No, 16th is tax. You're thinking about the 13th, 14th, 15th. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry. I can't keep up with them all. Uh, but my point still remains is the fact that the Second Amendment is there because in the Declaration, oh, hey, look, it's our right and our duty to overthrow a corrupt government. I uh, Okay, but I'm telling you, should you choose to exercise said option, you are guilty of treason until you win. I'm I just... I, I'm just... Acknowledging the logistics of the situation. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> There's two ways to go about it, though. You have the Second Amendment, which is meant as a deterrence for a corrupt government, an armed civilian, uh, 300 million guns supposedly in the U.S. That is the, the, the quote Piers Morgan likes to freaking tell around. Okay, 300 million guns in, say, well, I don't know what the statistic is for you know actual gun owners versus non-gun owners in the U.S., but um, that's one really big pissed-off army. <laughs> um, uh, we'll just send some drones in. It'll take care of that. Again, it's still one. Even if a third of the country, that is one really pissed-off army. <laughs> and I guess they can make their own drones too. They can hire a print one. Um, people get resourceful when they're pissed. Yeah, print your own drones. <laughs> but uh, my point is you have the armed deterrence as a way of avoiding a corrupt government. That was the intent, That's part of the intent. The three-fourths majority in the Constitution to, hey, look, fix issues within the government or redo the Constitution if need be is there as the lawful way of doing it. Uh, okay, but I'm going to tell you point blank, and Vit probably knows this chapter of history better than me, but correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't during this thing called the Civil War the South try and lawfully succeed from the United States, and the United States didn't think that they had the right to do that? <laughs> Which was brought up before the Supreme Court, if I remember correctly. Like, I don't actually know the legalities on that, constitutionally speaking. Do you, Marcel? I'm sorry? 
secession. We, we were ta he, he's talking about the, the two main ways if the United States government becomes truly corrupt that you have the Second Amendment option and you have the three-fourths option where um, it, the, basically the states have the right to overthrow the Fed under certain circumstances. And um, I, I, that's basically what the South tried to do and why the United States wound up in a civil war because half the country said, no, you have can't leave. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, well, if you don't understand, Abraham Lincoln marched to the South to, to, bring, to force them into the Union. Yeah, so I, 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 the philosophical the debate me and Bob were having, I'm like, okay, regardless of what the piece of paper tells you, I'm going to tell you right now, either option, you're guilty of treason unless you win. <laughs> Sorry, I think a very traditionalist approach when it comes to uh, my view on DC and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, and I don't have a problem looking at DC with the same eye that the uh, revolutionaries looked at King George. I, I, and if it comes to it, yeah, but, and I agree with you. That is one of the founding American values: the idea of we don't follow a corrupt, tyrannical government; we overthrow it. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's, a, that's, a, that's an ideal versus the reality of execution. <laughs> the reality is your ass kicked. Here's another shooting at uh, some business and arts, arts institute of business and arts. Uh, the financial director was shot directly in the chest, but, but survived going to the, to the hospital. I don't know places to shoot. Why do you shoot schools? Like, why, like, I hear a lot of schools on the news, but I don't hear, like, uh, train stations. Because they're gun-free zones. Yeah. Uh, Half of least resistance. And most, most collateral damage. I mean, you're going after children. What's more precious? <laughs> like I said, and also, they can't fight back. Easy targets. Strategically... Sound and um, yeah, little resistance, if any. There you go. It it really what, is. The what does not make that a prime target? It, it's the perfect target. You know, it, it, you don't charge an airport or a a bus station or a train it's station. Your meds if you're lucky. Yeah, it would. In, the same thing with charging a casino, or I mean, there, it's not like schools are the only areas that contain mass groups of people. It's just it's an easy target <laughs> with well, little resistance. Like, well, well, it's like if you look at the targets for suicide bombings and stuff over in the Middle East. What do they usually target? Buses, markets, all all the stuff that has lots of people that is very open. Mm -hmm. They're going for maximum impact from a Min maximum point impact, of view, from minimum a risk. Valley point of view, and everything else. That's what it's about. It's about making the biggest impact you can with being the smallest person or martyr or whatever the hell you want to call them. And, and the smallest possibility of failure. Exactly. That's why you don't hear about a lot of Israeli checkpoints being blown up anymore because, oh yeah, that's going to have the least amount of impact. <laughs> At least from a uh, like media point of view, they, the media will just view it as, oh, it's another you know, fi uh, rockets fired at Israel, you know, suicide bombing on Israeli. Uh, now, military. granted, uh, let's hope school shootings never get to the point where they're so commonplace that the reaction of the people is, oh, it's just another school shooting. Who cares? <laughs> Oh, I don't, I, and don't get me wrong, I don't want them to get to that point. <laughs> don't mistake what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's why I said that. I'm like, no, that's not what we're saying. Don't any of you dare put those words in our mouth. <laughs> uh, you know, that's... So, for those that are wondering, no, I am not calling for the violent overthrow of the U.S. government. Am I calling for the, the legal constitutional right of the overthrow of the government, potentially? Yeah, if you win. Yeah, you, you know what? Honestly, the only chance I think the U.S. has 
is um, not inherently a constitutional one, but it is in the bat and that we have the right to do it, and that is um, the American people need to keep themselves informed, they need to watch what their representatives do, and they need to vote. It, it, the representatives that are not representing them, every two years they need to throw them out. And they need to continue to repeat that process until they purge. And they, if, they, if who winds up replacing is doing it again, they purge them. They don't stop. It may take 50 years, but we don't stop. We, just, we, we make a pact with ourselves that it's over. The free ride's over. It's done. You assholes work for us now, and we're going to show up. We're not going to let you turn us on each other. We're not going to swallow your medicine. We're not going to let you convince us that, you know, hurting us is helping us. You know, what's the, what's the old joke? A government can break your legs and give you a crutch and say, I helped you walk. It, it, it's, we're not going to buy that anymore. We're, we're going to say, no. we're done with it. You only stay here in the political, in the representative class, if you're doing what is good for us our brothers, our sisters, the country, our fellow countrymen, and the stability of this nation. Otherwise, bye. <laughs> but it'll take the American people basically saying enough is enough, and you, it, it, you don't have any other option. And that, that will take a decade plus. You, you put too much faith into the American people. Because I... Uh, it, <laughs> If we're not those people anymore, the country's already dead. It might as well be, personally. Because <laughs> what, what happens every time people vote? They vote one way. Oh, hey, look, it's the Dems. Oh, hey, look, it's the Republicans. It's the same fucking thing. They're paid to lie to your face. And that's what I mean. We should call them. We should call them on the lies. The reality is, we actually have an opportunity we haven't had uh, in mass. We have uh, super PACs. We have the fact that it's uh, it's largely in the public domain what's set at these private fundraisers. So politicians don't have the ability anymore to go to Group A and say everything Group A wants to hear and then go across the street to Group B and say everything Group B wants to hear because Group B will know what they said to Group A and Group A will know what they say to Group B. Now it's the job of the people to go look that up for themselves, but they have access to it now. So the reality the people is... people are lazy. That's the problem. 140 characters or less. And that's, what, that's the attention span of like the American public. Uh, what five minutes on YouTube? No, 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 no. Three point one. Three minutes. Ten, actually, three point. Um, uh, whatever a sixth is. I'm, it's, it's too late to be doing. Everybody that. Right. It's basically, the average attention span for a YouTube video right now is three minutes and ten seconds. If your video is longer than three minutes and ten seconds, you have lost ninety percent. Depending on your content, obviously. Oh no, we still lose most people. I mean, I'm talking about the average metric just for our channel. The our, 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 our content is watched an average of three minutes and ten seconds. So if we can't make our point in three minutes and ten seconds, we've lost them. Dude, uh, this guy's a paramedic, man. This guy is. This guy says, in my ten years in the street as a paramedic and a high drug crime, uh, I also noted that most knife attacks were multiple stab slashes and done by a pissed off attacker. Up to 37 stabs. Whoa. Most uh, gunshot wounds are one shot, seldom, seldom more than three, except in the case of an ambush hit, which tend to be two or three to the back of the head. It's almost like people using a gun expect their opponent to die from one shot and stop shooting, where knife attackers tend to stab them to the ground or till they stop moving. Well, but that, never that, saw anyone, that ne, not he, the paramedic says never saw anyone shot thirty-seven times. Whoa, that's a lot. That, that that well, that that's not true. There have been instances where cops have shot people thirty-seven times. I remember that actually. Uh, so seven times for real? Yeah, it made yeah. It, it made national news. There was this incident where. 
uh, police just completely, totally open fired unprecedented on this poor sap, and there, the, the sap, the guy was shot 37 times. <laughs> I, I, uh, but it's rare, usually yes. But what you've done is you've made the case for the assault knife ban, which is where we started the conversation. And, uh, I'm just, no, I'm not doing this. It, it, it shouldn't have to come down to tactical and what does a ballistic thing do to a body. And uh, you know, a first grader's sign would be what does a ballistic thing do to a body and uh, you know, a first grader size body to an adult size body and all this other stuff. But the thing of it is, is that in all seriousness, we want to save lives. And, and to me, the thing that makes the most sense is to be able to let good people assist um, law enforcement by creating different licenses that makes them as proficient. So that we can't, we don't have to use a whole lot of tactics you know, hire more officers. And because you know, I've attended a lot of you know, safety things like being in the HOA, police officers always ask for assistance, right? They're, they're never, I don't think usually we have but I, I want to stress adamantly a point on that, and that it's not just that you're certified, but we don't need more George. Uh, well, I, actually, I'm not going to bring this story into the science. But it, you need if you're going to be assisting the police or the sheriff or whatever, you need the certification needs to be deputization. Well, all right, all right, maybe the assist doesn't... Uh, uh, because otherwise you are acting as a vigilante, and we don't... Uh, right. why, why, why Batman makes a great movie, we do not need a nation of Batmans. Well, you're taking, oh, wait, like the CHL, like we have a CHL, we already have a, a liability responsibility in our state law, as most, as most states do, that permits you uh, and tell you what to do, like duty to retreat and so on and so forth. What I'm getting at is that to politically have the argument, which which it'll usually result in, then if we're talking about human life safety, then we, we should have higher level certifications and proficiency tests for people to have, I guess you would say, a higher level CHL that permits them, because of the training they've received and proficiency that they maintain, that they're able to be trusted by society to carry on campuses. And in the case where, like the law dictates, you know, interfering for the life of another and so on and so forth would would be as valiant enough to step in and stop those perpetrators. You know, if it's a teacher that gets certified uh, or or a father having to pick, pick, having to pick up their, their, their child perhaps in the middle of the day and this incident happens there and they happen to be at the same time. I'm just saying, instead of always the talk about taking away, taking away, taking away, let's talk about enabling um, and and get real about saving lives because the only thing that tends to work is more security, whether it's hiring more cops, which happens to drop crime, like we were talking about in the UK, um, or you know. Well, okay, okay, but it, what you're getting on there is the fundamental shift that regrettably has happened in America as of late. As of late, the prime argument in the United States is not how do we address the problem in a way that allows us to expand rights out in a way that makes the problem less so if not eradicate it altogether. It's how do we get rid of the right that some may have the ability to abuse in the name of sidestepping a problem. You know, how do we, like you say, take away? It's about how, how, how do we, we prevent by our, our, and that is the mission statement of the John Q. Public American people right now, unfortunately, of, well, we have to take your rights away because someone over there abused them, uh, and, and therefore nobody can have it anymore. When it should right, be. And then, and then the question goes, why do you need? The question should never ask about need. Once you get a need, then you are in an entirely subjective uh, space, which more controlling types of governments employ very efficiently, of, of which I think we don't want to go down. When someone says, you don't need that, I, I begin to cringe because it's a very, very, very dangerous um, ideology aspect to say, 
uh, it, it should never go down the avenue of, of, of need in, in, in any you know, capacity. Um, well, that, I, and you know what? I'm going to anger everybody. In, in, I'm going to anger the French right now. But there, um, it, the, there's the perfect example of this is the dichotomy between the United States First Amendment and the, the French right and the French uh, document, equivalent documents, which basically state the same thing, but there's subtle differences. The First Amendment of the United States says, you know, Congress can't. They can't stop you from doing the same thing with the Second Amendment and all the others. The French one says, you know, basically it's the same spirit. It's the, oh, yeah, yes, you, 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 you can, we respect that this is the good thing of a decent society as long as it isn't illegal. Mm. Uh, and it's, that's the subtle difference there. One scenario is, under no circumstances, is can the right be infringed on? You have the right. We can't tell you you don't have it. We can be pissed as hell how you use it, and we can counter it by using our own right. Correct. You know, but we name. can't take the right away from you. And the other argument, and it's gaining a lot of traction in the U.S. right now, is you can have your right so long as we like what you do with it, but the moment we don't, we're going to take it away from you. And that's not a right. That's a liberty of convenience. You have your rights so long as it's popular for you to have them. Uh, yeah, we should end it there. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I always, when I take this discussion, <laughs> I wholeheartedly, sincerely debate it in the terms of, you know, we get, we've been sarcastic and, and all this sort of stuff, but in all seriousness, when, when we debate it, the point of it is, is it, and it should always be, it should never be, it should never be about this and that and oh, you know, caliber. It should come down to wanting to save, save lives. And we shouldn't deviate and make things political or no or, or sound bites because a life is too precious to to, to, to be squandered. No, I, I, and I agree that problem should be addressed. And, and I don't think anybody here is advocating the, the the reverse argument. I don't like anymore where people will advocate that the right is so absolute we have to ignore the problem. Uh huh. We have to figure out how to address the problem without removing the right. Correct. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's infinitely harder, but morally it is what you should. Exactly. I see the response. Yeah, I see a lot of responses like, that's my constitutional right. And they're, they're, they're right in regards to your constitutional right. But, let, but, but let's look at what the political reality is, uh, short of going to the Supreme Court. And I welcome, you know, it, it, uh, you know, gun lobbies have done that to enforce rights, but the political atmosphere, even in the state of Texas, where the states can do, it, you know, especially like making gun-free zones, I think we should go like the other way. I've repeated it over and over tonight. Is, is let's look, let's look at how we give gun permits out, and, and the skeet shell being the most basic, and then let's make ones more advanced. In Texas, let's not say oh, 10 hours to six hours. I, I think it should still be 10 hours. I think people need to be proficient. If we're gonna, if we are by law, other than um, what the Constitution, Constitution says, but why the context from what the law is written within just the state, this is just at state level, then let's make logical sense and say, no, we want you also to be proficient. It is your right, but let's be proficient. And if we already have gun ban zones at that CHL level, then let's make a level where it is it, it societally makes sense that if you have this much proficiency and you're willing to take you know the proficiency test and by golly we will permit you and you can carry it anywhere 